for police officers on St. Andrew Street in Central City. Officers making an arrest one night after 76-year-old Henry Barber was found stabbed to death in this apartment complex. 72-year-old Herman Oaks lives next door. I'm totally here about that. So close to everything. Police say this is the woman who killed Barber, 36-year-old Vanika Hankton, a first cousin of Telly Hankton, the person police once called the city's most dangerous man. Officers say Benika has a lengthy arrest record for crack cocaine. Oftentimes when she is arrested, Mr. Barber will go and bond her out of jail. That's because officers say the victim, Henry Barber, had recently collected a very large, possible six-figure cash settlement. Mr. Barber had a substantial amount of money. I can't go into details, but we believe had a substantial amount of money inside the apartment. The money was stolen and has not been recovered. Deputy Superintendent Marlon DeFillo says the victim and Hankton were romantically linked. Mr. Barber was, was, had a lot of females who were coming and going in his apartment to the point we believe there was some intimacy, intimacy type relationship. Officers say Hankton called police on Thursday telling them something seems strange at Barber's apartment and even met officers at the scene. The district officers went to the home and Due to their alertness, they became suspicious because she was actually piercing through the window, directing them to, to where he could be, uh, telling the officers that that looked like blood on the floor. Police officers... We can't let a street, uh, a rich, powerful street thug intimidate the whole justice system. The district attorney's office will retry the man once called the most dangerous criminal in New Orleans, but experts say the case sets a bad precedent. The trial for Telly Hankton, the man once said to be part of a notorious crime family, ended in a hung jury. And a criminologist says this case could have a ripple, in, a ripple effect on the criminal justice system. WDSU reporter Simney Chew and it's tonight's big local story. Simney? Scott, experts worry that this hung jury could set a negative tone for any future convictions. This is a chilling outcome. After two days of testimony, a jury could not reach a verdict in the murder trial of Telly Hankton. Tulane criminologist Peter Scharf says this is not an average murder trial, considering the 35-year-old Hankton is also described as a powerful drug lord and hitman in uptown New Orleans. He's a guy who shoots people in the face, runs you over and shoots you in the face. He's a million dollar bail and has the best lawyer in the city. Prosecutors say he killed Darnell Stewart in May of 2008, chasing him down on South Claiborne and then shooting him several times, all as revenge for a cousin's death. The DA's office introduced surveillance video provided by a daiquiri shop that caught the gruesome murder on tape and an eyewitness who testified to the killing. But a defense witness provided Hankton an alibi, testifying she and Hankton were having drinks at the W Hotel at the time of the murder. This is fear city. Uh, fear got worse, is all you can say. And that uh, they, this is a case you cannot lose. But in a city plagued with violent crime where witnesses are afraid to come forward, and in this case, the eyewitness even had to be escorted out of the judge's chambers after his testimony, Sharp worries this hung jury could implicate other cases. This is violence with a lot of resources. And you don't have to be a rocket scientist to know that there are risks. No one wants to be a dead hero in these kind of cases. And that's tragically a possibility in these kind of cases. 
Hankton is set to stand trial in September for the June 2009 killing of Jesse Reed, which prosecutors say was also a revenge killing. Hassan Williams, an eyewitness to that murder, was killed two weeks later. Police say the same gun was used in both deaths. Hankton was behind bars at the time. Scott? Today we in New Orleans with it again. Josephine Street, Central City. You know what I mean? No other than your boy Tully Hankin. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I had to cover this one, man, because it was it was requested by one of my followers. You know what I mean? I'm gonna throw your name up there, bro. You know what I mean? And I did this one basically for you. You know what I'm saying? So look though. Now I'm glad you gave me that window, bro, because this story is definitely, definitely, definitely fire. So a lot of YouTube niggas done did a lot of Tully Hankin stories and so forth and so forth. I'm going to give y'all some details. You know what I mean, so you're not going to be watching the same shit over and over. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to start off with a female by the name of Latoya Stewart. Okay? Anybody know about the Tully Hankin story? He had dramas with some little dudes. That was on the block. You know what I mean? They start getting money, so forth and so forth. And drama's kicked off. Bodies start dropping. And, you know, he got charged and convicted for the murder of Derny Stewart. So this is his sister talking. Now, mind you, I'm going to give you some information so y'all just roll with me. I'm going to give y'all different, different, I'm going to jump in and out of different things. You know what I mean? So y'all just kind of keep up and put it together. So, Latoya Stewart lived on um, 2011 Josephine Street from 96 to 03, okay? During that time, when she testified in court, she had a lot to say that took place in the house. And she's seen a lot of things. This is why we're going to talk about some of her testimony. So, first of all, Telly Pluck. Brian Broussard dumped Terrell, Nakia, Nakia, Mike. Um, all them niggas hung out in 2011. Ennis, all of them. All them niggas was in, in 2011 chilling. You know what I'm saying? At all times. It was like a big group. You know how niggas chilling the block. So, some of her testimony, I'm going to run through it. Okay, she had five brothers. No, she had four brothers. Derny, Damien, Peanut, and Arthur. Right? All of them sold crack except Peanut. This Peanut was born blind and deaf. You know what I mean? And they all sold crack out of 2011. They moms, that was their mom's crib, of course, but their moms was a smoker. And she used to be in a, a abandoned building or an abandoned house around the corner from 2011. You know what I'm saying? Telly was friends with all these people. Mind you. You know what I mean? They house was like, you know, one of them houses, bro, where, you know, the moms is a fiend, so everybody just come through, bag up, do whatever they do in the crib because the shit wide the fuck open. You know what I'm saying? That's the kind of crib 2011 Josephine was. Okay? So, moving forward, when she was in the crib one time, she heard the nigga Telly coming in. He crying. Okay, he crying because he missed the seven brick. He talking to the nigga um Arthur Buki. You know what I'm saying? Telling the nigga, yo, bro, nigga took my bricks. Ah 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 woo woo woo. You know what I'm saying? Woo woo woo. So he like, he think his uncle took it, Frank Hankton. So he like, I'ma kill that nigga. Ah ah ah. So Shorty's witnessing all this. That's why I'm talking about her. He said the boy came in there crying, tears. You heard? About them things. He was missing them things. So Arthur gave him some bread. Whatever, whatever. Prior to Arthur giving him some bread, Frank Hankton came over there. They was outside in front of 2011 arguing. You know what I mean? Shorty heard the, 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 um, the nigga Frank Hankton tell the nigga Telly, yo, I'm not the only person that have access to the crib. My daughter and her boyfriend got access to the crib. Okay? Now, I don't know what type of relationship this nigga got with his own daughter. For him to throw his daughter under the bus. But 
a week later, an attempt was made on Frank Hankton life. He survived. One month later, on June 12, 2000, Frank Hankton's daughter, Denise, and Calvin Fox were both gunned down. Okay? Now, what my nigga, like, if this would, that's how, I, this is the thing. Shout out to New Orleans, yo. Shout out to New fucking Orleans, man. You know what I mean? I done did so much work on y'all, on y'all whole state, man. You know what I mean? I got my channel lit. Shout out to y'all, man. You know what I mean? But what is it, man? Is, there, is it like dog eat dog and puppy starving in New Orleans, bro? Because how a nigga set his own daughter up to get body? That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Moving on, though. So, nigga, Arthur gave him some bread. I guess he paid to connect back. A lot of drug deals went down in his house in 2011. Shorty seen a lot in that crib. It started through a little nigga named Pluck. You know what I'm saying? So the little nigga named Pluck, his name is Brian Broussard. All right? So the little nigga Pluck was on the block getting money. So he was selling a little bud. He, you know what I mean? You know, niggas play around, sell a little bud. Boop, boop, boop. Nigga met a connect. You know what I'm saying? He met the connect. Nigga had some fire boys. So he put the nigga pluck on. You know, pluck a little nigga. These is little niggas, bro. So the little nigga on, he get the dope. He starts selling the dope. But he was selling the dope in front of this nigga Tully Aunt Craig. You know what I mean? And I, I really believe, bro, at some point, the little niggas was coming up. And by them little niggas coming up, the nigga Tully was just like, yo, son, these little niggas can't be doing that shit over here, bro. That's my block. Woo, woo, woo. Ah, ah, ah. That's how I really feel about the situation from the outside looking in. I may be wrong. Comment gang. Chime in, boy. Comment gang. If I'm wrong, let me know, bro. If y'all know more, let me know, bro. Know what I mean? Listen, hit my motherfucking email up. You know what I'm saying? You can hit my motherfucking um, Instagram up. You know what I'm saying? Lifeswild, ENT at gmail.com. I'm going to put the um the Instagram up and put the Facebook up. Y'all got any more comments, anything y'all want to drop on me, any info y'all want to drop, shoot it to my joint, to my messenger, to my, to my direct message, whatever, bro. We on it. You know what I mean? Comment game, and I fuck with y'all too, boy. But anyway, nigga Brian Poussard. Boy got the plug for the boy. What he do? He going Josephine start turning up. Now, word is, son start making like five, six racks a day. Kitting it. You know what I mean? You do the math. Five times seven, that's 35 grand, nigga. They say the little nigga had about 70 bands saved up. You heard? Bought him a little V, whatever, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Do the one o'clock. In fact, Doodle was on the clock while Dirty was in jail. So Pluck and Doodle, they out there doing their hair on thing, turning up. So this nigga Tully comes out of nowhere, tell a nigga Pluck, yo, don't sell no hair on no more. And try to bully the little nigga like, yo, son, you know what I mean? You got to fight, son, bro. Woo, woo, woo. So Pluck like, nah, nah, nigga, I ain't trying to fight, whatever. Woo, woo, woo. What you talking about, man? Oh, yeah, y'all niggas can't sell no crack no, or no more, no more coke out here. No, I mean, pardon and niggas can't sell no more hair on out here no more. Woo, woo, woo. You know what I mean? So, in 2011, Victoria Stewart testimony, because we still on that. You know what I mean? Because I'm going off of different people's testimonies. You know what I mean? So, y'all going to hear different views and different testimonies of what different people were saying. So, she had a conversation between Pluck, Doodle, and Mike Mike. So, you know what I mean? Plucking them niggas, you know what I mean? You talking about, yo, son, you gonna body this nigga Tully, son. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Now, mind you, mind you, Ennis, that's why I told you, mad niggas be in that crib. Everybody that I named, and I named them again, Tully, Pluck, Brian, Pluck is Brian Broussard, Dump, Direct, um, that's Derek Smothers, Terrell Smothers, Nakia, Mike, Mike, Trell, Ennis, um, a whole bunch of all these niggas hung in that crib. They was all in that crib. So it's so weird to me, bro. Telly, all of them. So the thing is this. Sometimes the niggas that's on one team is in the crib. And they might have two niggas 
on the other side playing games. He on he playing both sides of the field. So I'm just like, yo, what the fuck was really going on here? And the a, a, a truth said them niggas was little niggas. They wasn't smart enough to know, yo, bro, we can't keep talking about certain people. And I, 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 I. Niggas is giving shit up. They telling. Niggas are playing both sides of the field. Like, for instance, this nigga Ennis overheard them niggas Pluck, Doodle, and Mike Mike say, yo, yeah, they, oh, well, Pluck and Doodle basically was talking. I'm, I'm pretty sure. You know what I mean? Because I'm going to tell you why I say that later on. You know what I mean? And Ennis heard it. He going to tell Shorty, yo, which is Toya Stewart, yo, you don't act like you act like you ain't never heard nothing and walks out the crib. When he walk out the crib, three days later, Doodle and Pluck get hit. You know what I mean? Pluck was in the hospital for three months. Tully hit both of them. When Doodle got out the hospital, he was making threats. He only got hit in the leg. You know what I mean? By how he going to kill Tully. Tully ran him down in the alley immediately. But before Tully ran him down in the alley, he ran down on Mike Mike. Mike Mike like, nah, I wasn't the one saying that it was Doodle. You see what I'm trying to show you? These niggas, and, and, and Doodle is um, Rodney Robinson. That's who Doodle is. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just, I'm just, I'm like, yo. Mike, Mike ain't even playing the game fair. You know what I'm saying? He playing both sides of the field. He chased Doodle down the alley. He run out the alley. Chased Doodle down. Shot him in the back. He collapsed on Saratoga and fell on the fence. But the nigga jumped back up and ran to the 6th precinct. You know what I mean? It's a 6th district precinct. I mean, I guess that's the police precinct. You know what I'm saying? So, this is the whole shit, bro. You know what I mean? And I'm, I'm going to give y'all the timings and the different ways the shooting happens and all that. But I'm just giving you her testimony. So, you know what I mean? So, Bo told Derny at some point. is when Derny come home. Yo, boy. Tully told. Tully said y'all niggas can't be on the block. And yo, comment gang, help me out, bro. Is this the same Bo that the Third and G niggas had dramas with? Because I'm at Third and G, they killed a nigga named um. They killed the Smothers. I can't remember his name, man. I'm gonna put it in the um. I'm gonna definitely put it in the subtitles, man. You know what I'm saying? But they killed the Smothers. And I, I see they got Terrell Smothers and Derek Smothers here, so I'm trying to figure out. Because the last names must be running. That's how niggas must be identified people in New Orleans by our last names. Because they got big families. And these smothers keep popping up over here. And they popped up over there. And the bow name popping up over here. And I'm wondering, you know what I'm saying, the Broussard. Another thing, they killed a nigga named Quentin Broussard that came and ran down. And he was with Bo. So I'm trying to figure out if the downtown and the Central City niggas had dramas. The 3rd and G niggas and the Central City niggas had drama. Yeah, so Bo Turdoni, the raise up off the block. Tell you don't want you on the block no more. So the little, the little homies had beef with the big homies. Tell he pops up 20 minutes later. He holla at P-Dub, Harper, and Bo. He go to his mom's crib, come back, get them niggas a grip. Toya start calling her baby father, Trell. Come get me, come get me. You know what I mean? Because she said she think Derny about to get shot. She wanted to find him. So when they got in the V five minutes later, the phone rang. You know what I mean? Your man Trell was informed that, yeah, Derny did get shot. So Derny thought Tully shot him. But Tully, she, she like, nah, Tully ain't shot him because I just seen Tully on his auntie porch. You know what I mean? So P-Dub is the nigga that ran down and, and shot your man Derny. You know what I mean? So whatever, whatever. Katrina happened. They leave. They come back. Of course, you know, the drama back in full effect. You know what I mean? So when she come back, she see P-Dub on 2011. You know what I'm saying? So she ain't know who P-Dub was. Trail must have put her on, yo. I, 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 P-Dub is the nigga that shot your brother. Whoop, whoop, whoop. I guess they just came back from Katrina. So they just driving around, both of them, and Derny is behind them. So they pull around the corner. She holla at Derny like, yo, you know what I'm saying? Yo, this is a nigga that whoop, 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 that ah, 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 that must have shot you, whoop, 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 or whatever, whatever. I don't know how Trail be with them and he ain't tell them niggas that. But whatever, whatever is the case. 
You know what I'm saying? So she tell a nigga that. So a nigga named Bessie, Darvin, Darvin Bessie, and a nigga named Derny, they walk up on the nigga P-Dub. When they walking up on him, they hear the nigga P-Dub telling the girl, yo, some niggas walking up on me. The girl must have been like, yo, why you don't run, nigga? He's like, nah, I ain't running. You know what I mean? So the nigga, Darvin asked the nigga, nigga Bessie asked him, yo, boy, you P-Dub? He like, yeah. So I hit him in the face. Pop, Lulu knock him. Drop him down. P that was found in the alley across the street from 2011. Tonight, surrounding the district attorney's office, this is witness protection system. This after a man whose brother testified in a high-profile murder case was killed Saturday night. It's a story we first broke earlier today on WDSU.com. The victim's brother testified in the murder trial of Telly Hankton, also known as one of the most dangerous men in New Orleans. WDSU reporter Tiffany Bradley is on your side with what this killing could mean for the future of murder investigation. Investigations. That's tonight's big local story. New Orleans police have confirmed that a 61 year old man shot to death outside of this Jazz Daiquiri and Lounge on Claiborne Avenue Saturday night is indeed the brother of a man who was a key witness in the Telly Hankton trial last month. A brutal uptown murder could be linked to the city's most dangerous criminal who's now behind bars. Curtis Matthews, the co-owner of this daiquiri shop, was gunned down in front of his business Saturday night. Neighbors didn't seem surprised over the killing. That's not the first time that I've heard Mama. of shootings and stuff like Mama. that. But this shooting comes days after a high-profile criminal, Telly Hankton, was sentenced to life in prison for murder. Curtis Matthews was the brother of the man who helped put Hankton behind bars. Back in September, John Matthews testified he was almost certain Hankton shot and killed Darnell Stewart in front of his daiquiri shop in May 2008. They can't uh, get you to get your wife to get your kid. Criminologist Peter Scharf says the recent homicide is a huge blow to the criminal justice system. How are all these great people in the DA's witness victim witness protection witness assistance program going to convince people to testify against organized drug interests. We got another nigga that testified against Telly by the name of Aaron Smith. This little nigga was Telly's brother-in-law. Know what I mean? He had his, his sister had two twins for Telly. So, you know, he felt like, and Telly felt like, you know, little nigga could be trusted or whatever, whatever. Mind you, I guess a little nigga be knocking shit down. Everybody in New Orleans knocking shit down. Everybody caught a body out that motherfucker. That shit is just like, you know what I mean? Graduating fucking middle school. But um, he introduced the nigga Mooney, reintroduced Mooney back to the nigga Tully because I guess they did a little juvie bit together and Tully didn't remember the nigga by name, but when he seen him, he knew who he was. So, Eric G is the nigga who pulled this nigga Aaron back into the whole situation. Because Eric G was out on a hit looking for Tutu. Mind you, I'm going to catch y'all up. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to give y'all a good summary. But I want to give y'all some testimony on, on some of this shit that happened. So, Eric G... I guess he was on the hit looking for Tutu because Tutu had money on his head. I'm going to tell y'all why Tutu had money on his head. You know what I mean? Tutu had money on his head because Tutu, Derny, and another little nigga. I'm going to get to that. But they, they, they ran down on George Cup. George Cup Hankton. You feel me? And smoked him. You know what I'm saying? But Cup was a nigga that was doing a lot of shit. Them niggas, yo, we gonna get to that, boy. So look, right? This nigga Cup, he was doing some bullshit. But anyway, that's why money was on the nigga head. Now, this nigga Aaron Smith played two sides of the field, ass nigga. The reason I'm saying that, because he trying to get at Tutu. He's Tully's brother-in-law. Tully got money on Tutu head. Cause Tutu done dust off goddamn George Cup. So this two side playing in the field ass nigga had a man in jail. 
and you're using Tutu phone. Or or I'm guessing money off a Tutu account or whatever. And Tutu being a real nigga that he is, told a nigga Durney or Durney, go pick up some money from this grease ball. They ain't call him a grease ball, but I'm calling him a grease ball to give to his man in jail. Same time, he's trying to link Tully, Aaron Smith, to tell him, yo, I got dealings with Tutu, woo, woo, woo. And he ended up meeting Tutu by the bottom line through a nigga named Hockey. So they called them niggas to meet up, you know what I mean? He wanted to set up Tutu. So they exchanged phone numbers, meet with him a few times, told Tully he can handle it. And he be fucking with the nigga Tully. So Tully tell him, nah, I don't need you to help help me with that. If, it, if you could tell me where boy at, I'll line you up with five racks. You know what I'm saying? So this is little this this little nigga right here, bro. You know what I'm saying? Was was just like a scumbag of all scumbags, you feel me? Because he's just a two side playing the fill ass nigga. I wish they would have caught his ass out there. But anyway, Aaron Smith testifies about some of the joints that Walter Porter did. Mind you, this is this nigga brother-in-law, bruh. And Mooney is his man. Mooney is his man. He ride around with Mooney, fuck with Mooney like that. That's what I told you. They was riding around seeing Mooney walking down the street. And, and Mooney jumped in the car. And he realized that, yo, son related to Tully. He want to ride with, he want to be a shooter for Tully so bad at nigga Mooney. He asked a nigga every day. Do you talk to your peoples? You talk to your peoples? You know what I mean? Nigga Aaron Smith ended up linking him and the nigga um Tully together. They go to the nigga um Mooney crib. You know what I'm saying? Mooney showing the nigga all kind of grips, telling him what he could do, this, this and that, whoop, whoop, whoop. Ah ah ah. So they get back in the car, nigga Aaron Smith and the nigga Telly. So Telly like, yo, you gonna fuck with the nigga? Aaron like, you, so what you think? He like, yeah, the nigga crazy, man. He like, you gonna fuck with the nigga? He like, yo, if you tell me he official, I'll fuck with him. You know what I'm saying? So I guess boy must have told him, nah, son, he official. He a kill. He bought that murder game. You know what I mean? You know that's what it's all about in New Orleans any goddamn way. You know what I mean? Busting a nigga head, noodle knocking nigga. Murder game, protecting drug enterprises and shit like that. So, Mooney was responsible for killing witnesses, for, for getting that witnesses, killing the witness brother. You know what I'm saying? He was on the hit when they did catch Tutu. And I'm pretty sure they caught Tutu by so much information that this little nigga Aaron Smith helped with. If I'm wrong, I don't know. But do do so what I'm reading and what I'm seeing, this is what I'm getting from it. You know what I mean? But um Yeah, Mooney was definitely there, and I'm gonna explain how they did that. You know what I mean? So we had another person by the name of Hassan Williams that testified against um Tully again. And and this is this is this is like I'm gonna kind of get out of rundown now, you know what I mean? So, Derny was killed on May 13, 2008, by the Dakovi spot. Tully got locked up for that, bonded out on a million dollar bail, and proceeded to kill Jesse Reed. Derny and Cup met at some barber shop. This I'm gonna get out of rundown now, you know what I mean? Derny and Cup met at some barber shop. Chopped it up about the beef. I assume the shit didn't go right because they ended up getting kicked out the establishment. While calling some niggas from 17th Street and he watching Derny and them, Tutu and a nigga named Carmen walked up behind Cup and aired him out, smoked him. So he Cup busy watching Derny and another nigga in the car. And he don't even know Tutu and the other nigga creeping up on him, the boss's head. You feel me? So, when Cup died, that's what sent this nigga into a frenzy. You feel me? This nigga on Tully. So, he ran down on Derny. Killed Derny. How they caught Derny? I think they caught him in front of the, um, 
in front of the dockery spot, right? But they caught Dirty on the interstate or somewhere driving. Big high-speed chase. You know what I mean? I think it was his cousin that was with him. I can't remember the nigga name right now. Tully Hankton cousin that was with him. You know what I mean? Probably was 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 George's son, to tell you the truth. But they chasing this nigga. You know what I'm saying? Whoop, whoop, whoop. This nigga Dernie crashes. When he crashes, he try to jump out the car. The nigga Tully cousin slapped the nigga. Hit the nigga with the car. Boom. When some land on the floor, tell he out the car like this. Get a nigga four to the body and five to the head. You understand, bro? This is what he get. He get that shit in front of everybody. You know what I'm saying? Most of the damn shootings this nigga day, he didn't shot people in front of everybody. So the nigga gets locked for that. When the nigga get knocked for that, I told you he's buying out a million dollars now. By them time, he already know Mooney. Right? I guess Mooney is showing Tully, yo, do your man Aaron Reed. I told you them two is close. Mooney and Aaron Reed is, is bridging. Them niggas is homies. You know what I mean? Ace Boom Coon and all that and all that. Whatever you wanna call it. So Sun is showing the nigga telling yo, bro, this is the area where the nigga be at. You know what I mean? Or this the block whoop whoop whoop. Before you know it, tell you them peep tutu, he out the car. Start booming on two. I'ma give y'all first a testimony of a person that was actually there, you know what I'm saying? And and seen the shooting, you know what I mean? And then I'm going to tell y'all what Aaron Smith said. So Hassan Williams said that they was walking, and she was walking with Jesse. Tully came from around the corner speeding like police, trying to cut them off. Tell them, don't move. Put your hands up. Police, right? They see who it is. So they start running together. You know what I mean? I guess the nigga Jesse must have cut across the street. And they they booming at him, son. Because they got like, you know what I mean? You know the niggas got like two thirds or whatever. So they're like, a, a, I, I don't know if this Hassan is a female or, or I'm, I'm guessing it's a male. You know what I'm saying? But I'm, I'm, then I'm also guessing it's a female doing due to what the, the, the kind of the testimony. So I'm not sure, but they said that the son ran across the street. They start dumping, boom, 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 boom. They had you know what I mean, like twenty times before son dropped. Now when he dropped, she said she seen Tully st stood over him, ran up on him and stood over him. And she couldn't identify the other person because they was an all black. Woo, 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 right? Now, going back to Aaron Smith's testimony, when he came home, he seen the murder on the news because he was in jail. Right? And when he seen the murder on the news, he knew that Mooney did it because they said that the boy got shot over 50 something times. Mooney carries two guns, right? So Mooney was tight. Mooney was mad because he he's like, yo, I'm just showing this nigga Tully the block before this nigga Tully tell me anything. This nigga jumps out and start booming on the nigga. You like, yo, he wasn't even supposed to be on the scene. Mind you, the boy is on bond. You know what I mean? For a million dollars, so he wasn't supposed to even be on the scene of the murder. But anyway, you know, they killed his uncle. And his uncle was the one that showed him the game. So he feels some type of way. You got to handle that one personally. And I'm pretty sure that's what that nigga was thinking. But I'm, I'm going to tell you the mind frame of a nigga like Tully, man, just now. You know what I mean? But anyway, so the nigga, nigga Walter Porter tell the nigga Aaron Smith, like, yeah, man, I'm mad at this nigga, man, because this nigga was supposed to just show me. Or tell me how the nigga look, and I was going to go deal with the nigga. Nigga wasn't supposed to be on the scene. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't supposed to be no way around that joint. He jumps out the car, starts shooting, so he's like, I had to follow up. The nigga said, yo, I was hitting the nigga. He had two guns, like he do a 40 and a 9. He said, I was hitting the nigga in the stomach and in the head. Body, head, body, head, body, head, body, head, body, head. You hear me, bro? These niggas is making Picassos out of, out, of, out of M1s, man. What? 
You catch an M1 like that, and that's what you doing? Shoot the nigga over 50-something times, bro. You know what I'm saying? Then after they lock the nigga telly up for that, this weird old nigga comes up with a yo. I'm going to start a free telly campaign by keep killing niggas with the same two guns that they killed Jesse Reed two to it. So if you keep killing niggas with the same guns and that guns are still on the street, they can say Telly Hank the name do it. The real killer is still out there. Huh? Bro, if I didn't read this shit in real life, I would have thought a nigga was a lying nigga told me these stories. Okay? What is in the mind frame of a man that makes all this fucking money to beef with some little niggas to start all this drama? It's too much power. Too much fucking power. This nigga, BG, was big homie. Yeah. Put my nigga Tilly Hank, you know what I'm saying? One of the realest niggas in the city, you know what I'm saying? You they they hating on him right now, you know what I'm saying? You think got him all over the news and shit, you know what I'm saying? Witnesses coming up dead and shit, man in jail. You know what I'm saying? He posted a million dollar bar. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to give a nigga another bond because he knew the man could make the bond. You know what I'm saying? That's it. You know what it is, baby. Yeah. You know what I mean? BG, he done got caught on the wiretap and all that. Talking about, you know what I mean? All the inside work that the Hankins be doing and all type of shit. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, he got caught out there. You, you know what I mean? You seen the clip. He chilling, talking crazy. You know what I mean? Like, these niggas, they ain't got too much sense. But anyway, the nigga Porter, when I ain't gonna say they ain't got too much sense, niggas was real comfortable. You know what I mean? Talking that shit and doing what they was doing because the hang things was running the fucking town. This nigga motherfucking um, Mooney, he run down on the witness. So I guess, you know what I'm saying? Um, I don't know if it's Aaron Smith. Or is it Mike Mike? I want to say Mike Mike. I mean, Mike Mike gave the nigga the jack and they called on Terrell Smothers dump and told them niggas, yeah, it's a go on the witness. So Mooney runs down on the witness. You know what I mean? So when he kick, he kick, they blow, they shoot off the door, kick off the door, something like that. It was another person with Mooney or whatever, from what I understand. And Mooney switched his MO up from according to Aaron Smith, that he didn't want to use two guns no more. He wanted to use one gun. John Matthews, this by the way, this happened on October 21st, 2010. John Matthews had a Trey Pound. For y'all who don't know what a Trey Pound is, it's a 357. So he had the Trey Pound. You now I'm saying he started blowing back. Boom, bah, boom. But you know. I played around with hammers for for a while, and I, you know what I mean. And so that's a defense. That's not a defensive gun. A three fifty seven is not a defensive gun for all of y'all who out there. And you know, this is a little gun knowledge. Don't go buy a revolver as a defensive gun. What I'm saying is is, is that a revolver is a, it's it's not an offensive gun or a defensive gun. It's more like. A gun that nobody know you have. You know what I'm saying? Because it, it can't play defense. Somebody come with you, they come with an automatic. You you, you got a, a five, six shot, and they got 20, 30 shots. You know what I'm saying? It can be your offensive gun, if you you know, but not necessarily. So it's, it's kind of like a gun that that's a person is carried that's unexpected. You know what I mean, man, back out of pocket 38 or, or, or snub 357 on you and you didn't even know you had it. That type, that's what that type of gun is for. You know what I'm saying? So when you start blowing a 357, Mooney gun jam, how do I know this? Inside testimony. Mooney gun jam, he fix it, but when he fix it, he also fix Duke and give him 17 shots. You feel I me? Mean? Word. This nigga miraculously still testifies. You hear me, bro? He still come to court and testify and tell you. The next day, or two days later, Mooney killed a nigga brother. 
could be linked to the city's most dangerous criminal. We're talking about Telly Hankton. WDSU reporter Simney Chuan is live where that murder happened on South Claiborne Avenue. And Simney, what are the details that you have today? Camille, 61-year-old Curtis Matthews was gunned down in front of the Jazz Daiquiri Lounge on Saturday night. He suffered multiple gunshot wounds and died at the scene. We have learned that he is the brother of John Matthews, who testified against Telly Hankton at his last trial. He testified that he was 95 to 97 percent sure that it was indeed Hankton who gunned down Darnell Stewart in front of the Jazz Daiquiri Lounge back in 2008. We've heard from District Attorney... And this testimony come from Tutu's sister. So both of the sisters basically testified. And Jesse Reed's sister testified. And Latoya Stewart testified, which is Bernie's sister. You know what I mean? Her brother got shot twice. Okay? And this is why I say Cup and the nigga Tully was doing mad bullshit. Because they, they, they once one, one time the niggas got shot, the first time the niggas got shot, I'm gonna say shot, was at a DMX concert. You know what I'm saying? Matt, I think four people got hit, some shit like that. You know what I'm saying? And I'm gonna tell you how that happened. You know what I'm saying? So the DMX concert, they hit the nigga like 12 times. They thought the nigga was dead, but the nigga survived. Had a shit bag all that when he came on. You know what I mean? Who did that? Cup and Tully. You know what I mean? Then the nigga got hit in the Legion Field. The Legion Fields. That's how y'all say it out there. That's a year before he died. At his sister house. Him and the nigga Derny. They over there in the crib. Putting the computer together. Whatever, whatever, whatever. You know what I mean? The nigga Jesse. Whole family. There's grandmoms. Aunties. Cousins. Everybody. Who lurking in the cut? Motherfucking nigga Tully and two other niggas. You know what I'm saying? When them niggas about to leave, they, they saying they goodbyes, go out the door. Two shooters run after Derny. Nigga, Jess, the nigga Tully run after Jesse. You know what I mean? He catch the nigga Jesse, hit the nigga, the nigga end up in the store. The nigga Derny get away, come back banging on the door. You know what I'm saying? So this is just to show you how much they kept running down on these niggas, bro. They run down on Doodoo. They're riding down on, on the nigga um, Pluck, Brian Bossard. Then they ran down on, on motherfucking Dernie. Then they ran down on Jesse and so much other more motherfuckers, bruh. This nigga, this nigga Telly. The, the, the Central City Massacre. Committed those crimes. There was rumors out there. It was even brought up in Michael Anderson's case that he had done this. It was dubbed the Central City Massacre. Five teens gunned down at the corner of Josephine and Daniel in June of 2006. The killings prompted then Governor Kathleen Blanco to send the National Guard back to the city. Within days, Michael Anderson was arrested and later convicted of the killings and sentenced to death. When Mike Mike asked, Mike Mike testified against him too. I just didn't put that one in there because it was just a bunch of, you know, history and shit like that. The Mike Mike testimony too. He testified against that nigga. And this nigga Tully is so funny because when Mike Mike got arrested for this shit, before he testified to anything, he put that nigga on death row. Right? He put Mike Mike on death row for killing five teams. Tully funny ass gonna tell the nigga, yo... I'm going to help you out with the lawyers and shit, shit like that. Whoop, whoop, whoop. You know why he told him that, right? Because he was responsible for that shit. How the fuck you kill five teenagers, nigga? What's wrong with this nigga? This nigga, you, this nigga, bro, it was, it's, it was deeper than the money, bro. And deeper than being a fucking hater. This nigga was a, a fucking sociopath or whatever you want to call it, man. I'm going to call it like it is, man. You know what I mean? You killing five alone, niggas? Little niggas, bro. The little nigga jumps out. The nigga pulls up on Josephine, right? The little nigga jumps out. This nigga Tully walks up to the nigga. Some type of rifle. Hit the nigga in the head. Boom. After he hit the nigga head, he hit the driver in the head. Boom. Now the car is rolling. He's walking alongside the car. He sticks the hammer inside the car from the driver's side door. And start beat on the other three niggas in the car. Bro, according to the detective Jeffrey, the nigga said four out of the five teams were dead 
by the time the paramedics arrive. You heard, bro? They like Mike Mike up for that shit. Who was the real nigga? Tully Hankin, bro. Story is wild, man. It gets deeper than that. It's, I kept it too long. I probably had to give y'all a part two. But yeah, this shit is crazy, bro. Fucking crazy. I mean, ultimately, like, he got convicted. You know what I mean? For the, for the, for the Derny murder and for the Jesse murder. And I think they're going to bring his ass back to trial and try to hit that boy with the death penalty for them five teams because Mike, my case was overturned. You know what I mean? But yeah. No talking, no cool. Ain't no beef between the hood. It's all love back here. As long as you don't come back here with all that tripping.